Fire away, everybody. Preparing for any yield issues or looking at the field? Have you done any advanced gathering on that? No, no, because right now the field, uh, evident, you know, evidently it's outside. You know, they roll it in. They're going to roll it in Thursday night. That's what we heard. And then they're going to put the goalpost up Thursday night. Um, we will uh, get a practice over there on Friday. We'll go over and kind of walk around and maybe hit some balls, but just get a feel for what it looks like on Friday. With Kadarius off the injury report, do you anticipate using him as a part there's, there's a possibility. Uh, you know, it's up to coach. See how the week goes this week. It'll be that sixth guy, whoever whoever's going to be up as, at that wide receiver spot. He can, he's definitely in the mix, though. Dave, I guess I have to ask you about this stuff that happened before the yeah. Justin Tucker. Um, were you, did you see that? Were you down with your guy? I was, in, I was in the middle of the field when it happened. I, I saw, you know, what was going on down there. I saw it, and it happened. You know, it wasn't that long of a deal. It happened, and then it was over pretty quick. But, um, you know, I, I just think you just need to, you know, you, ha you have to have a little bit of common sense, really. You know, I mean, you don't put your helmet in the middle of somebody's drill. I mean, that's just common sense, really. So. You guys, you, you, it's kind of a dance. Yeah, it happens all the time. I mean, we, we have to wait sometimes five minutes to, to get – our, a spot, but we, we understand, you know, um, where we are in the pecking order. You know, kickers wait <laughs> for for offense and defense. I mean, if they're on the field and they're doing their drill, you let them do the drill, and when they're done, we, we go in and kick. You know, I mean, you, you share it. There's only one field, so you have to share the area at that time until we split, you know, when the referees come out. Is that something that, uh, like, Patrick said that it was, it's been a problem, not a problem, but you know, it's something that happened before. Is that something that- Tucker's right, he's done that for 12 years, he probably has, and, and it just meshes up with our warm up the way he does it. It doesn't mesh up with every team. Every team does different timing. Like our timing happened to be when he does his thing. So we were there first, you know, so you let that, you, you know, you, you just wait for the guy to get done. It would have been five minutes and he would have been fine. It's, it's really not not it's turned into a big old deal, you know, and, and I think Pat and, and Travis did a great job of explaining it and you know what happened. What are your early impressions of Cloud in that return game? Yeah, he's very good. I mean, he's a, um, you know, obviously he's an experienced guy. Um, we faced him last year. Um, he had a couple of nice returns against us. Um, you know, he was solid, strong, uh, spinner type returner that slasher we call it, you know, uh, but um, you know, he's very good, you know, and, and obviously, you know, we're, we're preparing for him as well as Debo. I mean, Debo could be back there on, as, as a kick returner. He's been back there a few times, so. Is, is there anything unique about kicking in Allegiant Stadium that <sighs> learned through? I mean, obviously, we've been there before, so that's, that, that helps, you know, but really, uh, when you walk in the stadium for Super Bowl, which we, we know already, it's different. I mean, we went, you know, we went to Arizona. That place looked totally like a, a totally different place, you know. It's going to have all the, the colors for both teams, and so it's going to be like a. You won't even realize you're in, uh, you know, the state in the Raider Stadium. You know, I mean, but we have been there before, so uh, you got to think that that's an advantage, really. I mean, so. Seems like last year we were talking about, you know, a, a few special teams miscues with like the holding and then some some muffs, but this year's kind of been less of that. Is that something? Is that a difference that you've seen in, in either rosters? Uh, no, not really. I just think it's a, a thing that happened last year. Um, really, just really one guy, really kind of. I mean, and um, you know, we've, we've been solid this year. I mean, I'm I'm happy the way um, you know he's Richie's been handling things, and uh, you know he's he's got a lot of experience and played in a lot of these big games before, so it's we're, we're confident with him. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a, a crazy year. I mean, we, you know, we get everybody's best shot. I mean, when you when you go back and you look at it, and um, you know, it, it just seemed like teams had more rest than us, and it just it, just the way the season went, and it was a struggle, you know, and, and a lot of times, and um, you know, to be able to get to the point where we're at, and we knew our backs were to the wall, and we had the win on the road. Uh, really, it goes. I, I really think that last game of the season against the Chargers, you know, and, and people, a lot of people won't probably won't believe this, but. That game where, where our backups had to play and our, and our starters were watching and, and they watched how they competed on the road, you know, I think it made everybody like come together as a football team because at that, coming up to that point, we were winning a game, losing a game, winning a game, losing a game. That was the first time we won a game, won a game, you know, and then we got on a streak right there. So, I, I mean, that game right there, you know, in my mind, I mean, you know, for me, because my guys were playing, all the special teams guys were starting, 
you know, to be able to come through, you know, on the road, beating the starters, you know, on the road like that, that really brought us together as a, as a team. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to tell uh, a difference. I mean, that's that's the thing about him. He's he's very even keel and stays the same. Um, obviously, on a plane, he's a little bit more happy, you know. I mean, but um, yeah, he, he's the same and he's consistent. And, and the guys know what they expect. He's not, you know, he's not going to go crazy in the locker room because things aren't going right. He's gonna he's gonna, you know, let the guys coach and you know, and then tell them what they need to do. Simple, doesn't make big long speeches, you know, and. and um, you know, the guy, it really works in the NFL. It really, it's really sustainable the way he coaches. What has been effective? Well, um, you know, bad things happen sometimes, you know, and, and the guys, nobody's more upset than the guy that made the mistake. They know it, you know, so he doesn't rip them, you know, he's, and then when good things happen, he's, he's not going crazy either. He's not, you know, running in the stands or doing, you know, you know, he's, he keeps it keeps it right, you know, and and uh, you know it's a solid foundation for us, you know, and, and it makes us go. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe a little bit. I think probably the numbers would say that um, as well. You look at it and, uh, you know, these offenses adapt every year. Um, every five years you see certain plays, concepts that, that usually work. And then um, I can take it to a year by year. I mean, you can see in a three-week span a particular player concept that works and then um, other teams are doing it. Uh, and then all of a sudden, three or four or five weeks later, then it gets shut down. And so you kind of take that year by year. There's concepts that teams do. Um, and defenses, I think these coordinators have done a really good job of really mixing things up. Um, not predictable. They st there, there's not a lot of tendencies. And so with that, um, you know, you have to be able to adjust to that. So I would say, yeah, there's probably a little bit to that, uh, which makes you on offense make sure that you, you really know where you're going to go with the throws, how you're going to block, et cetera. I thought that coming out to start that first half was so important to get a lead, to um, stay ahead of the chains, not getting third and long in that game. When Pat made that throw to Travis um, for the touchdown to start, I knew we were going to be in good hands throughout the rest of the game. Uh, you know, he, that, that was just such a special throw, a great catch. It was really good defense um, by them. But, you know, you, you get some momentum, you get some first downs. Uh, we. You know, would have loved to have that screen at the end there to go up 21-7, didn't get it. And then the second half, just too many three and outs. I, I do think some of that was how the game was going on, on our defense versus their offense. Field position wasn't as good. You know, we had one where we got to stop, uh, backed up, and we, uh, we ended up moving the ball to about midfield. We punted them down and flipped the field darn near, you know, it, you know, whatever it was, 80 yards, 90 yards. And that's a part of that game. Um, so we know we got to be better, and we, we weren't as good that, that second half. Right. Uh, Tony hasn't played a lot. Mm -hmm. How Yeah, I thought he was, I thought he looked good. Um, for us, it's, it's, uh, it's a day by day thing for, for him and where he's at. And, um, you know, but all, all the guys right now, it's kind of a, an interesting week just because you do have that extra week. So just really mentally keeping the pace up for everybody, but also um, physically trying to make sure that you don't lose your conditioning as well. But he did good. Is he in a good, for lack of better term, headspace? Yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. And, and again, we're, we're evaluating all that with every player every day, just kind of seeing where they're at. We want to be able to see it in practice. It's so important to be able to see these guys practice and see how they how they're doing individually, and then how they fit within the scheme and what we have. Matt, you've spoken to this before, but in what ways do you see Travis set kind of the tone and tempo that, that maybe we don't see, uh, whether it's practice or game, locker room? Yeah, it's real. He he's uh, the energy that he brings is so contagious, and it's. 
it's, uh, you know, he's been doing this a long time with a lot of success. And when he brings that energy, people just feed off of it. And it's, it's, it's not easy to do that every day in practice and then take it to the game. Game day, he's always, he's always uh, in a good place. Uh, throughout the week, he's done a really good job this year of making sure that um, we follow him, him and Pat, with that energy. I mean, our offense right now is in a good place feeding off of energy. And, and I think uh, um, when those two guys have that energy, they follow. Yeah, it shows who he is. I, I mentioned it last week um, in this same meeting that uh, Quez is a guy that's internally driven. He's 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 mentally very resilient. Um, you know, he knows more than anybody that throughout the middle of the season, when there were some things going on, not just with him but our offense in general, that um, it, we all look at ourselves. And so it's just crazy when you look back at that moment. I remember being on the field after he made that catch and just thinking, man, life is crazy. You know what he what he's gone through. Um, individually what we've gone through and for him to you know stick through that make a play for pat to trust him to throw him the football that's what that i think that kind of in a nutshell explains who we are as a team let alone more detailed our offense uh, the last play of that game comes down to that and everyone executed it wasn't just his good route it wasn't just a good throw there was good protection there was other guys running good routes and it ended the game in a moment that we needed that play was that difficult to call that play in that moment no nope be completely honest with you, not not at all. I mean, really, um, if the play is in a certain way, it's it's in with no hesitation, no reservation. So we put that play in, and I think everybody's seen the clip. Pat saying that he, you know, give me the ball in, in that situation, and um, you know that's what we get internally a lot. <laughs> so in that moment, we're going to give him the ball, and uh, he he usually good things happen. NFL is a copycat league in some respects. You kind of talked about that with the defense. Mm -hmm. Is Kyle Shanahan a guy that you might look at in the offseason and kind of see the innovative things he's doing? Is he, is he a guy that you guys kind of look to? Absolutely. He, he does a lot of great stuff. And I think the thing with, with uh, Coach Shanahan is that he um, – he stays creative, does a lot of the stuff that they do really well, and finds different ways to window dress it. And, and he's got great players and great scheme. And when you match that together, you get to this point. So a ton of respect for him. It's not something that's happened one or two years. It's been his whole career. And it's in the run game and the pass game. Uh, Pat was telling us about the preparation process of uh, how y'all would go through certain plays and how your time in Chicago kind of helped you call, call plays in these critical situations. Just how did that influence you being the head coach of Chicago? Um, just situationally, being able to listen to the players and hear their input, it's so valuable, uh, especially, you know, you get, we, situational football is always important. Um, when you get to the playoffs, when you get to these games, you want to make sure you're as prepared as you can possibly be. So um, we try to be really good at talking through and communicating um, situations. And sometimes those situations never come up, but it's that one time that they do. And when they do come up and they work, those are the ones that are fun because you can always use that for your next meeting. And, and I think the most important part of those meetings that we have that I've learned as a, as a coach in general, regardless of position, is listen to your player's input. Um, if they trust the play and they have conviction in a play, it has a much better chance of working than if you like it more than them. All right. Uh, what's the beginning of this ride like for you? This year has been a, it's been a, it's been a wild year, man, and it's fun just getting the game plan ready and um, trying to clean everything up before we go down to the madness uh, over there in uh, Nevada, man. So Jason kind of kind of got you about your beard. Similar to that. I've been growing the beard out for years, man. Now I uh, just started this probably at the end of the season. We started playing our best ball and uh, just rode it on through the uh, the playoffs, man. Now, you were particularly. Um, I think it's what we saw on film from the from their defense. Uh, just you know, guys flying around, playing to the to the to the whistle, um, and kind of trying to impose their will on guys. And uh, we knew that we had to meet that uh, mentality with uh, the, that kind of mentality ourselves. Do you feel like guys look to you for that kind of stuff for, for energy? 
not just on game day, but during the week as well? I think, I think during the energy, I can help kind of challenge, channel that mindset, that mind frame, um, that desire, that focus to, to kind of lean on the guy next to you and play, play a little bit harder for the guy next to you, knowing what we're going up against for sure. What's the difficulty maybe in repeating that this week? Um, knowing that it's on film and that uh, the team that we're going to play has seen that, that, that we can bring that mentality. So the, the challenge is there. Um, they're, uh, they're, this is a group that it's going to be the best defense we play, we play up to this year. Right. And, um, and I'm excited about that challenge, man. Sorry, Pat. You're good. Uh, Andy's well known for advocating you guys show your personalities, but also we've got a limit. I wonder what that's been like for you to navigate Andy's line and, and how much he's let you be who you are. Yeah, I mean, I've been on paper saying that I, you know, I'm very fortunate I've been here with Coach Reed because he's helped me learn uh, while showing my personality, my passion, my energy for the game, all while trying to, you know, channel, channel that um, professionalism uh, to not hurt the team. Uh, without a doubt, I've been fortunate, and I think Coach Reed does it better than anybody. Frank was saying yesterday that uh, during some of Andy's talks the other day that you would just kind of jump in and yell, and Andy was kind of like, yeah, let's go. Is that part of what, what it means to feel free to be who you are? I don't think I was cutting him off. I think I was just <laughs> maybe maybe beating him to the punch, getting uh, getting everybody fired up. I was just excited and uh, trying to channel that energy and um, and make sure everybody heard me, man. Good. You've been the uh, Super Bowl thing a few times now. Um, from year to year, how are you anticipating Monday night going free for all the week? Maybe a little bit. It's exciting, man. It's all exciting stuff. It kind of builds and sets the tone for the whole week. Um, it's the biggest stage in the world, man, and that's uh, and that Monday night, that's going to be uh, kind of where it starts for everybody. And uh, um, at this point, man, I just love it, man. It's, a, it's an exciting time. It's a once in a lifetime type of thing that I've been able to enjoy a few times, man. So, what's your appreciation level of that? I mean, you went to playoffs all those times and didn't make it, and how hard it is to get back. You can't take it for granted. No, nah, there's nothing you could take for granted in this league. Even being in these offices every single day, uh, you got to find appreciation in that and. Um, you know, I've been uh, I've been beyond fortunate to land here in Kansas City and and be surrounded by the men and women that are in this building. It's just um, it makes you want to play that much harder and uh, appreciate it that much more when you get these kind of opportunities. Talk about getting support, not only from the guys, but obviously from sharing that. But for you in Baltimore on Sunday, just what did it mean to have your brother on the field with your family, have your brother there, and obviously you have another athlete to play with? Just what does it mean to be that person? So, it's another memory in the journey that we get to cherish, man. And uh, I'm fortunate that I got all the support I need off the field. Um, and, you know, it gives me a reason to play that much harder on the field as uh, the people you just mentioned. So, Travis, they had talked, Andy and Pat had talked about how you needed that rest week 18 a little bit. And obviously, you started the season with the knee injury. Has this been more of a grind for you physically than, than other years in your career just because of that early injury? And I mean, every single year is different, and I'm not going to lie. There have been years where I've kind of battled through some things that, frankly, were a little bit more serious and a little bit more uh, frustrating than, than what I had to go through this year. But um, this year, I think the, the fact that we weren't winning kind of piled up on uh, how I was feeling physically. And uh, you can just catch yourself in a, in a, I don't know, just like a darker room, I guess, if that makes sense. And um, being able to find some ways to win, kind of rally with the group, um, find a way to win the division still, find a way to get into the playoffs and get to where we are today, man. It just makes it that much more fun. But um, every year has its own challenges, man. And everybody's dealing with something, man. I promise you. Travis, it's also like around Christmas time that you guys were at Bowls. What were you going through? Coach Reed. Coach Reed, just challenging every single person in this building to up to Annie just one more step and just keep taking it up a notch every, every, uh, every week from here on out. And uh, that's why we love the big guy. You know, it, it's never you never fall astray from that kind of mentality. Uh, no matter how many losses you have, no matter how close the games are, and you're just not finishing them, um, Coach Reed does a great job of rechanneling that mind not, that mindset every single week and presenting a challenge uh, against the defense or the offense or just the team that we're going against um, in the in the near future. And uh, I mean, this week, no better time than to challenge everybody in that building. He's got he's got everybody fired up. Um, I mean, when you look back on it, it was definitely a time of like now or now or never. Like let's let's refocus, let's let's get this thing going. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, yeah, I guess every journey is different, man. Every journey is different. So it's definitely appreciated that we had to go through that. But um, it don't mean nothing if you don't come out of this this uh, last game with a victory. What examples do you have of how your games evolved to accommodate you know playing 10, 11 years of usually when NFL players just drop off? 
Um, well, I say uh, football has changed a lot, you know, especially the tight end room. I think I've, when I first got here, the majority of my reps were with my hand in the ground. Um, and it's kind of slowly changed to where it's either 50-50 or I'm, I'm, I'm in a two-point stance. Um, and that's run game, pass game, and just the RPOs, the ability to, to have the quick throws on run plays, um, you know, has, uh, and having that option, putting all that on the quarterback. The, the, offenses, the offenses have just changed a lot. And uh, on top of that, you know, the coaching staff in here has done a great job of putting me in positions to succeed. And um, with that, you know, it's just on me to make sure I'm putting in the work and uh, I'm ready for everything. Have you had more, I guess, in front of the camera experience than anybody else on this team? But just wondering where, where that comes, the confidence that you have in that situ those situations, where that comes from? Does it My mom's home videos, man. <laughs> <laughs> just having that camera on me at all times. <laughs> Seeing what silly stuff I'm gonna do next, man. I honestly, I just, it, I've always been comfortable in in the rooms that I've been in, and um, just been fortunate that uh, I don't know. I've been able to kind of look into a camera with ease. I guess I don't know. It's just uh, just having fun out there. I guess. Being an athlete, does that? Um, you know, I think. Help I think uh, just having confidence in general, and, and uh, sports in general. Sports for me were where I built my confidence. Um, I, I was probably won't believe me, but I was a shy kid growing up, up until like I got onto the sports field or the court or the ice rink. Um, and then I kind of let my personality show a little bit more because I was having fun, I was having success. Um, and that's just kind of propelled me to, to have confidence in life. Um, you put your arm around Kadarius after that game in New England. What did you tell him in that moment? And then what are you telling him in the facility this week as he prepared for Man, I just want him to know it's always, it's always love in this building. You know, and I know guys go uh, go through things uh, both in this building and their in their personal lives. He just had a baby girl, a beautiful baby girl. So shout out to uh, Kadarius for that one. But I think um, you know what's real is what happens in this building and uh, and how we can channel that. And I just wanted to make sure he knew that we were uh, we were all still behind him and ready to go get the Super Bowl, man. Coach Tobe also mentioned what there's kind of a galvanizing moment for the starters to watch. What did that do for you guys to see them kind of grind out that one? Just helped with the momentum and the energy to the team, man. It was just, you know, everybody getting excited for the guys that don't necessarily get to make those plays or don't get those opportunities. Um, and especially to, to go out and get a win in the National Football League is about as hard as it gets in, the, in this profession. So it's like, I don't know, you just, you just get excited for them. It just helps that momentum and that camaraderie a little bit more. Travis, you've obviously been here a handful of times now, so you've experienced, you know, all the, the chaos, the bright lights around the Super Bowl. What do you tell or what advice do you give to those guys that haven't been here before so that it's not overwhelming for them as they participate? At the end of the day, no matter how much uh, hype, no matter how many cameras, no matter how many lights are out on that field, at the end of the day, it's still the, the game of football that you know how to play. And um, you're the one of the best in the world at doing it. And uh, believe that, feel that confidence, and just try not to make the moments bigger than what they are. And uh, yeah, lean on. If you feel if you're feeling like it's getting a little nervous, man, just lean on your brother next to you, and uh, we'll we'll find a way to get through this thing. We'll go to Nate, Neil, and then Jeremy. Go ahead, Nate. Uh, Travis, looking back to the last game, uh, but as a moment of watching film, what did you think was your most impressive play in that game? Um. Man, I guess uh, finding a way to screw up the play and then finding a way to make up for screwing up the play when uh, Pat had the third down uh, on our second touchdown. It was like in the red zone-ish. Um, screwed up the play, ran, ran the wrong route, and then found a way to make a play and make up for it. Um, I don't even know if I want to get into that. <laughs> was, was that the diving play? Yeah. It's my guy right there. What's it going to be like playing against him in the Super Bowl again? The king of tight end you, man. He's the uh, best tight end in the league, and I mean, deservingly so this year. He's been playing lights out, um, playing the best football of his career, and uh, really catapulting that, that San Fran team uh, through the playoffs, man. And I uh, couldn't be more proud of him and couldn't be more honored, really, to go up against uh, George in another Super Bowl. Um, can't say enough amazing things about who he is as a guy and who his family is. Um, can't say a bad thing about him, man. So it's going to be a fun time. Jeremy? Got to try and match that energy, man. Coach, now you're saying it's, it's important to listen to your players, their solutions about the offense. Like when, when the team was struggling, what sort of solutions do you suggest them try to get the team through? You guys are right now. 
Um, I think it was just uh, it was just understanding how teams were playing us and uh, and talking to the coaches about how we're how we're going to attack them. Um, sometimes it's like. Uh, I don't know. There, there could be a miscommunication amongst the initial like uh, reason why we're calling these plays, and for whatever reason, sometimes you just got to sit down and talk it out and get on the same page. And uh, that being said, um, I think it was I think it was more so honing in on the fundamentals than it was scheme, um, and just locking in on, uh, on making sure we're being accountable at all times throughout the game, and uh, no matter what's called, finding a way to get that done. Go last to Matt. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Travis, when you started off. Yeah. Uh, what was just the influence? Of how, why did you choose that organization, and, and what kind of her legacy? Yeah, Sister Berta was an amazing woman, man. And um, our hearts have been out with uh, the family and everybody over at Operation Breakthrough uh, since she's passed. And um, you know, it's uh, it blew my mind that that organization uh, was kind of was already implemented and had already had the the infrastructure to be able to take care of uh, the families that it had been taken care of. And I mean. It made me want. It drew me in to want to be a part of that and wanted to wanting to keep that thing going, and uh, even more now now so than ever, man. Knowing that she's gone, um, Operation Breakthrough is such a staple for this community, uh, especially on that east side, and it's uh, it's a beautiful thing when you go in there. So just trying to, you know, appreciate what she started and uh, and keep that thing rolling, man, because it's a, it's an amazing opportunity for the kids over there. Thanks, Trev. Appreciate it. Thanks, Trev. All right, guys.
All right, great to be here. Um, just blessed that. And the way I look at it is I'm blessed to work with these guys again for two more weeks. I've been praying for that every week we're in the playoffs here. So, and a beautiful day. We're in these walls again. I said that last week, right? I don't get to work outside. With that, I'll just open it up. Last year, you guys faced San Francisco a few days after the Christian McCaffrey trade. How have you seen the yeah. way Kyle uses him to ball? Yeah, thank God we got him then and not after he had had him for two or three weeks. He's Listen, it's a, it's scary to watch all the weapons they have. Uh, he, he's one piece of it, a big piece of it, right? Um, and even in that game, the first time he touched the ball, he had ran for a seven yards you know, run or something, almost broke it out. I mean, he's explosive, real smart football player, but he's not the only one. They're all over the place on that on this particular unit. Coach, uh, Justin Reed has uh, announced a future of 300,000. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'm humbling, very humbling. I'm going to shoot him for doing that. I'm trying to burn, <laughs> I'm trying to burn every T-shirt that I can find. Uh, I don't think I'm getting them all, though. Yeah, <clears throat> all they got to do is put the tape on, Adam, in my opinion. Um, we had some crossover film during the course of the year, but when you dive into it and you watch them, <clears throat> you don't, this court, it's not a quarterback that's managing or all those tabs that they put on. This is, this, he's for real. Um, makes all the throws, really, really smart. And then what I, what I didn't know, because you know, I don't watch, I'm not seeing enough of it, is how athletic he is. I mean, this is another quarterback that <clears throat> when you cover everything back there and he finds a lane in, in a pass rush line, can take off. He did it last week. He's done it in every playoff game and gets positive yards. That puts a lot of strain on us defensively. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with, with him. Before we get too far away from it, Deion Bush is an exception. Yeah. Yeah, he did a great. He he did exactly the way we had practiced. And now here's another guy that doesn't get a lot of reps in practice, right? Uh, I was so happy for Dion. I, I love Dion. He's been with us for a couple of years, and you know, after <clears throat> a year ago, he was on the 53. If I if I have it right, and played a lot of special teams. And then this year, he begins the game the year on the on the practice squad, and yet he's always out there first. You know, he's always rallying with the guys in the secondary. I was really happy. He played it perfectly. He had the right eyes for it. He came. He was supposed to. He helped on one side, took that away, and then made himself available. And you know, in those moments, you know, those balls that look like they're easy to catch, those are the hard ones. And but he caught it. But he almost he almost made a mistake and started running out. And then he, then he remembered and he it's a big 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 play. God bless. <clears throat> yeah. I tell you, you don't replace that height and that length that he has um, but you know we'll get guys to step in there Felix will probably have to step in and, you know everybody's got to up their game in a Super Bowl anyway um, hopefully you know like last week I think it was decent in the first half where we didn't have to play as many plays but if the play count gets up that's where it gets tough for you know George being out there a lot and Mike and that's when we got to have guys to step in there how much uh, how much do you appreciate kind of those those secondary rotational guys like you know like Matt Dickerson, all the stuff. Yeah. And yeah, Mike Pinnell. And, you know, I mean, we don't even have Derek. Dott Derek Nottie is, is, is a key to what we do inside. And losing him is a big blow. And Brian Cook's not here anymore. I and mean, we've lost guys along the way. And to your point, guys have stepped in. I think that's a reflection of the coaches, the assistant coaches defensively, that do a great job with these players, even when they're not expected to play in the game. And then the players responding to it. Um, but we got a good group of guys that way, and we've needed it. I mean, we've gone through the season where we've lost guys here and there. Drew was out again. Nick, Nick's been out. Drew steps up. And I think they like rallying around each other. Who knows what's going to happen in this game where we may need somebody to do the same thing. Are you surprised that you haven't lost a few assistants along the way just with how good Yeah, very surprised. I mean, all these guys are deserving of being coordinators, and there will be some eventual head coaches in this group. Um, but, you know, everybody has their reasons for tabbing guys from wherever. But hopefully... God willing, these guys will get their opportunity to. Appreciation level for just getting to this point. You, you've gotten mm. to this point as a coach more than most guys who've assisted with two different organizations. What, what's it mean? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the off season or in the past here, we've been talking, I was having a conversation. I think it's a, a huge accomplishment to win a conference championship. And yet, 
we all know that when you go to this game, somebody loses, and then, and then you know, what they call it, the loser. I don't, I don't feel that way. It's harder to win. It's almost harder to win a conference championship than it is to win a one-game, you know, Super Bowl. So I value it, and to get to this point, I think, is an extreme accomplishment, you know, and, and, and when you think that way, you think about all the people that you did it with, you know, the coaches, the players, and all the, all the staff around it. I just think it's a, it's a great way to celebrate a lot of work. This began, I think, July 17th. And, you know, it's February 2nd. It's a long grind. Uh, but to a, to a man and a woman, all the people that we got working here, they've done a tremendous job. Steve, how much, Steve, how much does Mike Edwards and Jalen unlock just from you and the guys? Yeah. Versus on <clears throat> playing the second level, how much does Mike Edwards unlock? Mike has a huge <clears throat> play in that and because he's one of those cerebral guys that I keep talking about. And, ag and again, We've, I think we've mentioned this before. You know, Mike came new here. It's been one year in the system. It's not always easy to do, but it tells you a lot about him mentally. Uh, and he's a natural football player. He'll he'll see things out there and get a feel. Might not be exactly the way we worked on it in practice, but he finds a way to make a play because he's just a natural football player. That's big. You mentioned Felix. Uh, yep. What's his readiness to, to be able to help? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we feel real confident with where Felix is. I mean, I... I, th I know that we've talked about this, like, let's, let's say we were back in September or October, and I know the questions have come at times where we're rotating guys. You know, we've rotated linebackers, we've rotated D-line, we've, we've rotated corners with Josh and Jalen. And I know that I've, I'm pretty sure I said at the time that part of the reason we do it is to be ready later when guys have to step in. And Felix is a pretty good example. Like, he would get some plays here and there. I mean, again, I, I've said this before, it wasn't a reflection on what Felix wasn't do, or not doing, but the other guys are playing pretty good. And then Charles came. and uh, But now, hopefully, the fact that Felix has played some in games, that he'll be able to step in there and perform pretty well for us. Okay? Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve.